petrol scarcity hits different parts of Nigeria. And of course, as forced motorists to spend hours at filling stations while battling to get the product. What exactly is responsible for the fuel scarcity at the moment? And Nigeria's federal government has lashed out at some foreign embassies, it's alleging are issuing unverified terror warnings on the security situation in the nation's capital, the federal capital territory. Who do we believe? The federal government or the foreign embassies? We discuss this ahead on the program. And as usual, we have a look at the new super headlines analyzing some of the biggest stories on the front pages with a guest analyst. All ahead on The Breakfast this morning. All right, a very good morning to you. We're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful uh, Tuesday, uh, sorry, Thursday morning, and we're reaching you live from our studios right here at Victoria Allen Lagos. Of course, it's been a, a whirlwind week of discussions right here on the program, and uh, we're here to give you more interesting discussion so please sit back relax you can grab a cup of coffee like i have uh, in front of me and be a part of the program my name is kofi bartels flying solo uh, this morning because messi is unavoidably absent but i'm sure uh, hopefully she'll be back tomorrow um and i will do it better uh, when she returns now uh, for some for some time now we've been looking at some of the trending stories and uh, uh, particularly the one uh, you know concerning the oni of ife um, and his marriages. Um, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, we had, as part of our top trending segment, uh, the fact that he had married his sixth wife um, in a matter of a few months, you know, and uh, we had to look at what people on social space were saying uh, regarding that. Um, well, he's back on a trending segment. That's the owner of Ife, uh, believe it or not. And if you remember that day, I said, uh, how many more, you know, and we actually said that as a traditional ruler, he's entitled, like uh, uh, some would say, to do all this, to get him himself, the wives he's getting, it's his private life, and uh, he can decide to rule as he wishes, as far as he's not breaking any, any rules, any laws. So it is not our duty or our role to criticize him, you know, to, but I said as a, as a human being, as an individual, the question I asked was um, how many more? Because I, I, I said I was asking that out of curiosity, not to judge the man. Well, it, I don't know if these reports are true, all right, but they only uh, would be said to be verified when the palace would make a statement. But um, he is reportedly said to marry a seventh wife, but who goes by the name Ari Dunu. Ari Dunu. Uh, the speculation is that Oba any ton Adeye Ogunwosi is planning to marry Adirinu. This is coming just uh, like I said, uh, barely 48 hours because he was said to have married his Sith wife on Monday. It's coming barely 48 hours after uh, this revered monarch married his sixth wife, Princess Demi Tokwe. Um, that is a picture of Ari Dunu in front of you. Uh, it's wife number seven. Uh, I'm sure the you know the only who has the resources to to maintain all these wives, you know. But um, well, th this is it. This is it. Reports are just reports making the rounds that October 29 is the date uh, slated for this particular uh, royal wedding. Uh, or by any told a day, Ogunwosi had disclosed uh, why he had been marrying several wives. Uh, several women for weeks now. Uh, he just marked his 48th birthday and 7th coronation anniversary. Uh, he clarified why he married Mariam Anako and others. He explained that, uh, you know, uh, he tried making some changes, but he couldn't. All right? Maybe referring to his decision to keep to only one queen and have concubines. Uh, he said he tried to make some changes, uh, but he couldn't. This is what he said, quote, or this is what he's quoted as saying. The institution is bigger than me, beyond me. People in this palace are more than 800. They are close to 1,000. There are some people who have been living in this palace for more than 60 years, while some have lived here for more than 80 years, uh, or some who live here are more than 80 years old. Some people are over 100 years old in this palace. If I had my way, 
uh, I tried to challenge it, but it blew in my face. But thank God I'm still alive. It's an institution that is rich in heritage, culture, and tradition. So you can uh, uh, read between the lines. So we'll say uh, congratulations in advance if this um, story is true uh, to His Royal Highness um, and, of course, uh, to the the kingdom because of course they have something new to celebrate them um, like i said the last time i'll say it again uh you know how how many more you know how many more you know this is uh it's gonna be last um he it's his right i'll repeat again it's his right to uh you know to marry as many as he wants to marry but just out of curiosity asking how many more will it be um it's not too 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 uh, strange to have monarchs in this part of the world marrying as many as wives as they want to marry. If you remember the uh, the late, I think, Alafi Ovoyo, a uh, very fine gentleman who just recently passed on, uh, he had his own pension also for, for marrying a, a quite a number of wives. So this isn't the first time. Um, so we wish the Oba or, or Oni of Ife the very best uh, in his new marriage. People are talking, all right? Why are people talking? Because they think, you know, maybe they're not used to seeing, you know, any individual, not even a monarch, marry as many wives as this in such a short period. You know, imagine, imagine marry, marry one on Monday, and then by Thursday, we're hearing that you're going to marry wife number seven. You know, it's not too, some people are saying they're not used to it. Some are also saying, oh, uh, the Oba is quite young. Uh, why doesn't he wait, you know, may marry his first wife, second wife, may wait when he gets a bit older and he feels he needs a younger blood, uh, he can then, you know, marry some more, uh, say, okay, what if this one's get old, he gets old and he wants younger blood, would he now marry 14 wives, is what some are asking, but, um, of course, they, uh, uh, <laughs> he's, he's entitled to marry as many as he wants to marry, according to tradition, so wish him the best as he, uh, you know, looks forward to marrying his seventh wife. If the palace comes out to make a statement, then we can take this as, you know, verified news. For now, it is a rumor. It is a word out there on the street, and we bring you what the social media street is saying. And, you know, at the end of the day, we'll always wait for the palace spokesman to put out an official statement, you know. But if we go by what's been happening in recent weeks, um, sometimes even before the palace makes an official statement, we usually would hear that or oh, something's about to, to happen. Uh, I don't mean to sound by like a preacher. Okay, let's move on. Um, there was, uh, you know, quite a lot of reaction to the announcement uh, regarding Namdi Kanu. He's been getting victories in court recently. Uh, the latest victory he's gotten in court, uh, you know, he won one billion naira uh, in an Umayya court. Um, or it's in an Abia court, that is. Um, he also got his appeal court ruling in his favor, which in effect meant the federal government should set him free. All right. And then the latest is that uh, Federal High Court uh, in Umwahi Abia State has asked the federal government to award. Um, so the, the one billion was an Abia State court or high court. Now, this is 500 million naira coming from a federal high court in Umwahia, which has ordered the federal government of Nigeria to award or to pay, rather, uh, the leader of uh, the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra group uh, damages to the tune of 500 million naira and also to return to status quo ante. And the court, you know, ruled when they delivered a judgment on Wednesday, yesterday, October 26, uh, in the suit. Uh, on the extraordinary rendition of uh, the proscribed leader of the indigenous people of Biafra group, uh, Namdi Kano. All right, the presiding judge was uh, Milord the Honorable Justice Evelyn Ayan DK, uh, set a date to deliver uh, her ruling after she, you know, listened to the issues raised by the plaintiff on the 4th of October. All right, but it is important to note. The Kanu's lawyers had been, had filed this suit before the court in March, you know, this year. They were seeking redress or redress, uh, uh, you know, over what they called the infamous unlawful explosion or extraordinary uh, rendition of their clients, and the Kanu, which they said was a violation of his fundamental rights. So this is different from the case in Abuja 
that is actually on, on, on the treason and the substantive matters, which of course he also appealed in the court, now made it to determination on his extraordinary, uh, what they call rendition. I think that has been now, uh, has now is now a judicial pronouncement. So we can say that uh, he was extraordinarily uh, rendered. In fact, uh, the court is ordering that he be returned to Kenya, where he was taken from. You know, he returned to Kenya, uh, where he was taken from. So it's quite um, uh, an interesting one. Uh, congratulations to Namdi Kanu uh, right there. He's uh, going to be 1.5 billion naira richer uh, when he eventually gets out uh, of prison. I mean, so in, we can say that uh, at the end of the day, it's not being a waste of his time. Uh, to be in such a situation, be it in jail, uh, or to have you know his uh, uh, his rights um, you know trampled on by bringing him to the country against his will. Uh, that being said, we'll see what happens. Will they appeal or not? Uh, we'll have to monitor the situation. But 1.5 billion naira is uh, some good amount of money. But I don't know if Kano will be assuaged because we know that um, in the midst of all of this, he lost some people uh, who were close to him. We know that uh, he had to bury his uh, his parents. Um, we also know that some of his uh, comrades were uh, were shot when an attack on his home was launched. We also know that uh, some of those who his comrades are still languishing in prison. Some also who around the NSAS period were arrested are still in jail as we speak. So it's um it could be said to be a bittersweet one for him we'll monitor the situation as time goes on of course the comments online let's move on to the last trending story now picture this picture this uh as someone who steals food stuff breaks into uh, a facility you know a premises and then takes food stuff is given a jail sentence prison sentence of 21 years 21 years now, if you go by what people are saying online, a lot of people think that this is harsh. Why would somebody who's been jailed for, who's, uh, who stole food, be given 21 years prison sentence? Well, now, this sentence is coming from an Akiti State High Court, uh, the Ado Akiti Division. Uh, they sentenced a, a thief, or what we can call a burglar. Uh, to 21 years in prison. Now, according to the charge, this is very important to note, on May 11, two years ago, 2020, in some part of Adore Kitty, the capital of Edo State, uh, this individual, Jimo Dele, broke into a building uh, as well as a shop belonging to uh, a certain individual called Ola, Olu, sorry, Wa Yemisi, all right, Olu Yemisi Adele. And um, Jimo stole goods worth over 234,000 naira, including foodstuff from Olua Yemisi's shop. Goods and foodstuff worth over 234,000 naira. Now, why was he given 21 years in prison? Well, the prosecutor all right, said that uh, the offenses were contrary to sections. 413 and uh, 309 subsection 9 of the criminal code law cap c16 laws of akiti state 2012 and upon this they made uh, they approached the court and made their case before the court so uh, justice olaleko ola taura who uh, found the defendant guilty sentenced him to 14 years on count one and seven years on count two 14 years on count one and uh, seven years on count two um of course if you listen to what we said earlier the man made the uh, committed a crime in 2020 now does this mean that he had been in prison uh or in jail awaiting trial for two years or did they just arrest him because if he um was awaiting trial for two years and he won't add the two years to uh, his his 21-year sentence, that will make it 23 years. If the case has been on for two years, still, if he was in prison, uh, going to the court from prison, then, of course, you make that 23 years. We don't know. All right, but um, the comments online, a lot of people saying, ah, this is too harsh, 21 years. Uh, politicians, why uh, would you jail this man 21 years and somebody steals money and you jail him only two years? Or you give him a presidential pardon 
it is too harsh. A lot of Nigerians are rising to the defense of this man. But the question remains, you know, if you, you do the crime, uh, do you have any complaints? If you're found guilty, do you have any complaints? What, whatever comes your way. Isn't it better to not do the crime than to say, oh, you give me 21 years old. What about that politician? You didn't give him 21 years old. Why don't you just stay away from criminality and save yourself the calculation? All right, uh, we'll pull the plugs on the top trending segment for now. We'll return when we come back. We'll have a look at what the papers are saying. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa.